Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you. My name is Josh Palmer and I'm the pastor here at Melsham Baptist Church. Thanks for joining me again. I hope and I pray that our time together will encourage you, will challenge you, but also together you'll feel God's presence around you. May God bless our time. Let's just bow our heads and pray together. Heavenly Father, we are part of your family. We are your sons and daughters. And I pray that as we listen to your word, give us listening ears and open hearts to hear and to understand and to comprehend what you're trying to say to us. Lord, bless our time and speak to us. Whatever we have come with, whatever our um, worries have been this week, or any anxiety, or we come with joy in our hearts. Lord, in everything, help us to know and understand that you are still our Lord. You still reign. You are alive. So be with us as we spend some time together. May your spirit lead us and guide us. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Hi, so if, you, if you've joined me for the first time, just to let you know that we've been following a series uh, on Fruit of the Spirit. And today we'll be looking at gentleness. If you'd like to see the ones that we've already done, then please go back on our YouTube channel and you can scroll through and click the ones that you want to watch. But I've been thinking about the list of the fruit of the Spirit that we read in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Let me read them for us. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. I've been thinking about this list that we just read. These fruit of the Spirit. And I've been wondering about the way they appear, the order they appear, and an image to capture the author's intention. Is it a fruit bowl? All of these fruits, all of these fruit are together love, joy, peace. Or is it more like a staircase that you can you continue to climb? Or is the or is the best image um, a tree where the first fruit are near the lower branches, and the others get more and more to the top? In other words, I have wondered this week if those listed at the front end of this text are the easiest to get than those at the back, harder to get? Or are they equally the same level? Today we are talking about gentleness. At least that's the word used in this translation. Looking at several other translations is the word meekness. Jesus, if you remember, called his followers to be meek. Jesus called his followers to be meek. But meekness is often being misunderstood. Meekness has been as a, a wimpy characteristic, meaning that if a person is meek, they must be a doormat that people can walk over. A businessman once had this understanding. And so after a sermon uh, in church on Jesus' statement, that is, the meek shall inherit the earth, he told his wife, All I can say is if the meek are going to inherit the earth, they're going to have to get a lot more aggressive. Friends, you see, if there is any fruit of the Spirit that our egos wrestle with, it's this idea of being meek. I too wrestle with this sometimes. Just recently, actually, I had an opportunity to be gentle, and I missed it. Have you gone through that same thing recently? 
if we were to be graded on meekness, what would you get? But Jesus, the most perfect human, was meek. And he called those of us who are his disciples to be the same. And Galatians tells us that the Spirit produces this kind of fruit. But we need to understand, we need to understand that being meek doesn't mean we lack power. Rather, it is power under control, that is under God's control. Jesus lived his entire life that way. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 29 we can read, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Once again, though we don't find this attribute very easy, because it means we, we have to give up control, it means we allow someone else to control the events and actions of our life. And if there's one thing we don't want to give away, and that is control. A question for us to, to think about is, do we, or, or, or do you have control over your life? Or is Christ controlling it? So the question may be asked, how do we live a life of meekness or, or gentleness? The answer is found in this word. I said earlier, power. I would like to use that word power as an acronym and highlight five areas that will help us practically live this out. First one, power of, of power is in our personality. We are to live under God's control. There's a story about a guy um, who was getting into trouble with with everyone? Finally, he turned to uh, for advice um, to to a counselor, and he said, "Please give me advice. Uh, why doesn't anyone get along with me?" And the counselor said, "You have heard of the gift of hospitality." Yes. Well, you have the antidote. A silly joke. But how are we today? Do we let people and walk pe with people alongside us? My friends, God doesn't change our personality. He just brings it under his control. That's what he did with James and John, and known as the sons of thunder. James and John wanted to call down fire on the Samaritans to destroy them because they did not receive Jesus. You can read that in Luke chapter 9 verse 54. On another occasion they wanted to ensure that they, would, uh, they could uh, be properly enthroned in Jesus' kingdom. One on the right and one on the left. In Matthew 20, 21. There are arguments among them as to who would be the greatest. In, it's John who writes the Revelation and calls himself a servant, a brother and a companion. No longer does he think of himself as fighting for top position. Rather, he now has a gentleness and humility that did not exist prior to the filling of the Holy Spirit. God didn't change his personality. God just brought it under his control. My second one. In our outlook. Philippians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 says, Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. And what was his attitude? Friends, gentleness and meekness. Jesus looked to serve, not, not to be served. He didn't make demands, even 
when he knew what would be demanded of him. His outlook was different. Let's not look at our own interests, my friends. Let's think about others, especially in this time. What is our outlook? I'm sure you've had time to think about, especially during this pandemic, of where are you at the moment? Spiritually. So my question to, for us is, what is our outlook? Are we ready to serve others? Or are we so self-absorbent that we, we're just thinking about ourselves? What is our attitude? What is our outlook? Let's, let's give that to God. Let him control it, my friends. My third point is in our words. Ephesians 4.29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. My friends, our tongues are powerful tools. With them we can build up or we can tear down. We can encourage or we can discourage. James 3 verse 8 says, But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. So the only way, my friends, to live with our tongue is to live under God's control. How are you with your words today? Are you encouraging people or are you discouraging people? Within church or within your friendships? In your community? Are you hurting people with your words? Are you building them up? Do you use your words to hurt others or have you given God control over it? Our words. Also, when we use word slides, I'm sorry. They go a long way. When you genuinely mean it, when you made a mistake. And the response to that is forgiveness. Just like Christ has forgiven us. How are you using your words? My fourth point is in our expectations. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2 says, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Friends, when we have expectations we have placed on others and they don't match up to them, we can have problems. We'll ask questions like, why won't they start doing this, something that I want them to do? What's wrong with them? And when our relationship with God isn't what it's supposed to be, our expectations sound like, why are you letting this happen to me, Lord? But friends, when our expectations have been surrendered to God, we begin, ask, begin, begin to ask questions like, what are you trying to teach me? Or how can I grow from this situation? So friends, what are your expectations? What are your expectations for, for your friends? For your church members? For your pastor? Let's, let's surrender our expectations to God. And let's ask those questions, Zach. What are you trying to teach me today, Lord? How am I going to grow from this? My fifth one point is, in our responses. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32 says, Better be patient than powerful. Better to have self-control than to, than to conquer a city. 
It is said that a proactive person is spirit controlled and a reactive person is others controlled. Either you are prepared to act as you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, no matter what people do to you, or you allow the actions of others to control what you do. You allow the actions of others steal your joy. Has your response to a situation been ungodly lately? What has been your response? Are you being patient? Are you having self-control? Friends, I want us to understand that when I'm saying are you, I, I call myself in there. I ask these questions to myself as well. What is my response like? So we've just seen five points of mine. And if you put them all together, personality, outlook, words, expectations and responses, we get the word power. Under God's control. Christ calls his followers to be gentle. The ones who will inherit, who once will be inheritors of the earth. So how are you in this area of meekness or gentleness? Are you living under God's control? If you sense the answer is no, the good news is the Spirit produces this fruit in you. But the warning is this, it's not automatic. The Spirit does not produce this kind of fruit in those who are not willing to be changed, those who are not willing to be transformed. How are you in this area of meekness or gentleness? This morning maybe some of you need God to help you love. Or you lack joy at the moment. Or you want some peace. Or you desire God's goodness, kindness. If so, I encourage you to join me as I pray this morning and ask God to do what he needs to do in our lives. Let's submit ourselves to him. Let's ask him to take control of our life. Let's be those people whom God has called us to be. And my friends, if you are going through something that is troubling you and you need some prayer, I want to invite you to, to email me at melchimbaptistchurch at gmail.com and share your prayer request to me. And I can assure you, my friends, I will be praying for you. So I hope today that you feel encouraged, you feel challenged. And I hope that today in our personality, in our outlook, in our words, in our expectations and our responses, in all of those areas, we will have Christ controlling those areas. Let's be his followers who are gentle and meek. May God bless us and may God keep us safe. I pray this prayer for all of us. Let's just bow our heads and pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, the first thing this scripture makes me think about is you. For no one more is, is gentle than you. No one is more welcoming of sinners, as kind to the broken, or as understanding of the struggling as you. Lord God, we rejoice in your greatness and power, your gentleness and love, your mercy and justice. Enable us by your Spirit to honour you in our thoughts and words and actions and to serve you in every aspect of our lives. Lord Jesus, you are with us. In fact, you live in our hearts. May 
your presence generate a much quicker repentance on our part. May our reactions be not of agitation, frustration, whining or worry, but help us to be gentle people. Help us to be meek. All those who are going through a hard time, we pray may your presence be with them. Those who have lost loved ones recently, either due to this, uh, to this pandemic or due to natural causes. Lord, in, in anything, Lord, I pray that may your love surround them. We pray especially for all of our NHS workers and others who work behind the scenes. Keep them safe, Lord. And as this vaccine is rolled out, Lord, I pray that uh, the people will get it in time. And also, Lord, I pray that may your, may your peace be upon us. Help us to understand and know that you are with us. In this hard time, you're walking with us. And Lord, I pray that, that we will really examine ourselves. We'll examine our personality, our outlook, our words, our expectations and our responses. And Lord, I pray that we'll give all of those things under your control. Lord, you call us to be gentle and meek. And you say, we will be the inheritors of the earth. So I pray whatever we come with this morning, Lord, may we put that at the foot of the cross and may we know that your love surrounds us, your will for our lives. Is ultimate. You care for us. So Father, in, in whatever situation we find ourselves in today, may we know your presence is with us. So I pray that may your spirit continue to help us to become people whom you've called us to be gentle, meek. So lead us and guide us in our lives and keep us all safe, Lord. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So friends, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. Thanks for joining me again. May God bless you. May he keep you safe. See you soon. God bless. Bye.